morning. Uh, my name is Tony Lelliot. This thing's been sitting at the side here for the whole uh, uh, for, of yesterday, and uh, the reason it's there is that I requested it. So um, I hope to use it in a few moments. I work at the School of Education. What is it? <laughs> That's what Christian said. He said that I think there's one around somewhere, but I don't know about any pens. So I emailed and said, I will bring my own pens. <laughs> um, so I work at the School of Education, so I work with teachers mainly, pre-service teachers and in-service teachers. And um, what I'm going to talk about is the school curriculum. Now, one of the reasons I thought it might be of interest is that it's changed a lot. Things have changed a lot, uh, particularly since 1990. So I thought I would, at least you would, if you don't already know, you know what's in the school curriculum. But I also want you to think about what should be and what about after school, um, what happens after school regarding astronomy. So um, I've got two questions for you, which I then want to, you can whop up the lights if you like, because I'm going to then I'll write some of the answers down here. First question is that, what uh, astronomy content do you think is in the, from your, just from your guessing or your knowledge, what's there in the primary and secondary school curriculum? Any suggestions? Solar system. Solar system. Right, so solar system, right, what else? Phase of the moon. Phase yes. Of the moon. Eclipses. Uh, eclipses. Still mix up the phase of the moon. <laughs> right, anything else? <laughs> Comets, okay. Tides and seasons. Okay, yes. Seasons. Tides. Anything else? Any other suggestions? Okay, let's let's just uh, leave it there, and you'll see what you know. That that is astronomy, but it's a particular type of astronomy. Um, my other question: What do you think should be in there? Any suggestions? Well, if you were you know given free lunch, free reign about doing putting stuff in the school curriculum, what do you think should be there? Yeah, uh, critical thing. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, related to astronomy particularly, so we don't go off too, uh, too many other areas, but yes. Every stars and planets. Okay, uh, so stars. Difference between stars. Uh, stars and planet differences. Uh, what's also in the present one is these four planets, actually. There is something on planets. They yeah. the number on the planet. <laughs> yes, there so is. Well, the solar system, but yeah. For the ice cream, so cosmology. Cosmology. Big Bang, things like that, yeah. The and that's the Big Bang, etc. Okay. What we know, what we know about the universe and the objects in it. Okay, right, I'm going to stop there, um, but otherwise I'm going to run out of time. Um, um, okay, so I just want to, to you to bear that in mind from what you think is there at the moment and what you'd like to see there uh, related to what is actually there at the moment. And I just want to uh, take us through the, the curriculum at, at present and then have a few words to say about it. So what I'm going to say, basically, is that you know very well that South Africa is trying to promote astronomy as a hook. I mean, it's, it's, it's this thing of excitement for young children to get into science, and it's a way of getting into science. And it's, it's done actually reasonably well in the school curriculum, but um, particularly at the primary and junior secondary level. At the moment, there's quite a lot of astronomy there. Um, my, my issue is that um, it's almost absent from the senior high school curriculum. So you go, uh, we'll see in a few moments on the, on the slides, grade five, six, seven, eight, nine, which is the old, uh, the, the, the new way of talking about it, not standards, I'm gonna be talking about grades, but I will relate grade to standard in a minute. Um, grade five, six, seven, eight, nine, which is the uh, end of the, is the way of the junior high school, then there's grade 10, 11, 12, which is the up to matric. So grade 10, 11, 12, very little. So you introduce people, you get them excited, and then you don't have much anymore, which is a bit of a problem. Um, and some, some South African universities only cover astronomy at postgraduate level. Now, there are various reasons for this. Mine's one of them. But um, that is another issue. If you want to have astronomy as a, a, a thing that everybody's interested, not just people who are going to become physicists. Um, and then I think there's this gap. There's a gap in the schooling and that maybe at the undergrad level, not all universities, as you'll see in a minute, and um, we, I need to, us to think about what we do about that gap. So uh, <coughs> there are some acronyms. Now, this is where the whole education system is, in a night, is a sort of nightmarish. 
Um, I will be giving a test on this at the end of my talk. Um, but uh, this is in case when it goes onto the website, you want, you, know, you want to look at this thing again and refer back to it or something. If you, then you'll actually, this is, these are some things I'm talking about. I'm really not going to go through them much now. I'm just going to say that FET is up to old matric, standard 8 to 10. Okay, and it's now called grade 10 to 12. And then GET is grades 1 to 9, the old R to 7. Um, then there are these names of things, and I think I've missed out one of them, which is unfortunate. But uh, the current, oh no, I didn't, uh, the current <coughs> curriculum is called that. That's its name, all right? So when we're talking about the current curriculum, I'll come to it in a minute. The old curricula are these names. You might have heard of curriculum 2005. Um, the current curriculum is, the, is called CAPS. Everybody, all the teachers call it CAPS. And then uh, natural science is, is up to grade nine, and then social science also up to grade nine, which is the old history and geography. Okay, so um, it's fairly complex. The whole thing has been, since 1990, it's, uh, it's been quite complicated because there was this racialized curriculum prior to 1990 with all sorts of different departments of education running different, uh, different types of curricula. And then uh, at that time, uh, when, after 1990, you changed from art and 10 to grades 1 to 12, okay, an official change. After 1990, they took the essentially white curricula uh, whether it was in Transvaal Education Department or CAPE, etc., and they revised it to form a thing called the Interim Core Syllabus. And that actually then was um, in place, right, especially for senior secondary, right up to 2007. So it was the, it was the curriculum, which was basically the old white curriculum, was, was used to teach um, the sciences and, and geography and things like that. Okay, um, from 2007, it, it, it then moved uh, and used a thing called National Curriculum Statement. And then um, the lower grades used this thing that you may have heard of called Curriculum 2005, which was Outcome-Based Education. Um, and then they revised it, called the Revised National Curriculum Statement. Okay, so that's all the history up to, up to present. Now, so it was confusing, I'm sure. Now, we're talking about, what we're talking about now are CAPS, Curriculum and Assessment Policy Statement, which really takes those previous, these previous curricula and it updates them and says, right, there is content and this is the content. So that's what I'm going to be showing a little bit, of, mainly talk about, because we want to know what's in our current curriculum. But I'm going to give you a little bit of history as well. Okay, the old curricula, um, the, old, the, the primary school grades... Um, light and radiation was there. I, sorry, I didn't quite manage to get information from my geography colleagues because essentially quite a bit of the astronomy moved from geography into science, natural science. But uh, that was in the oldest, old, old curriculum. The old, up to matric, you found these. Electromagnetic spectrum, gravitation, radiation, nuclear fusion, and fission. And again, this area did tend to have the old geography did to tend to have some uh, some of the uh, planets and the solar system, some of the stuff we're looking at there. Okay, what is in the current curriculum? And I've given I've done an analysis here, and I've given you some percentages. Uh, something funny gone up in the end. Don't know quite what happened there. Uh, I wrote this thing on an iPad, and then. I emailed it last night, and uh, one or two little changes here. So the one or two little funny, funny looking things. Um, okay, we're starting in grade four, and grade four, five, and six. Oh, that's why that's come up there. Grades four, five, and six are actually there's a subject called science and technology in those grades in the primary school. Okay, it's called science and technology, and they get 112 hours in the year each year. So you can see that's the grade four curriculum. 20% of the curriculum is, is essentially astronomy, which isn't bad. Grade 5 curriculum, oops, there's nothing there, actually. Okay, so they look at Earth, they look at, um, at, at, at geology, but there's no real astronomy there. And then um, in grade 6, there's a small amount, less than, well, less than 10%. Uh, solar system, sun, Earth, moon. And then also uh, something else that's not astronomy, I can't read it now. So, um, so there's grade 4 and grade 6, there is some astronomy there. Grade 7, the top of primary school, this is the last year of primary school, you have some of those things you, you mentioned here, sun, solar system, etc. Then they go on to the biosphere. So 8% of the, of the final year of primary school has astronomy in. Then you get into the secondary school, and miraculously there's 20% of the curriculum in that year. Um, 
Earth in space, solar system, eclipses, and Earth's atmosphere. Okay. Okay, so I haven't finished uh, grade eight. Uh, there's um, also, um, beyond the solar system, um, light energy, uh, and, and these are sort of the more physics-y aspects of, uh, of, 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 of some astronomy things in grade eight. <coughs> grade nine, not very much. Grade nine, now we are into the second year of the, well, we're, uh, yeah, second year of, of, of secondary school, uh, gravity force, and then they get into metal extraction and stuff. And then um, the, the geography, this is the um, geography, sorry, this is the social sciences curriculum. So what I was talking about earlier was a thing called the natural sciences curriculum. Now I'm on to the social sciences, the old geography, and there's very little. I've been t speaking to my geography colleagues. I mean, there is some stuff, and that's it. Um, it is only 5% of grade 8, not very much. And um, so... Uh, the, but that's the sort of stuff that they cover in geography still. Right? So they're still covering some aspects of what you could call astronomical topics in the, uh, in, in, in the social science curriculum. Okay, what about the final years of high school up to, up to matric? This is what's essentially covered up to matric. And you can see the number of hours. It's only 20 hours out of the physical science and four hours out of geography. And they're broadly similar to the old uh, old curriculum I showed you a few minutes ago, the pre, the the, 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 the interim curriculum. Um, there is interesting. There's a bit that I, I don't quite know how this works, but they're meant to do some project work, which is formally assessed, and that's where a couple of these things come in there. But really, there's very little. I mean, I think they're going to spend more time on sound Doppler effect than they are on redshift. Um, there's a little bit here. Uh, and this is very, the, very much the, the formulae, and there's obviously a certain amount of on, on the electromagnetic radiation. In geography, very small amount uh, currently. So basically, the curriculum is transferred into, the, 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 the astronomy topics have transferred into the uh, science curricula um, at, at the lower grades from geography, and uh, the upper grades have rather a, very little. Um, so, this is the sort of summary of what I've been saying. Um, astronomy accounts for 11% of grades 4 to 9, okay, of the natural science curriculum, and uh, it's unequally distributed, it's not in all the grades, and 5%, just grade, uh, uh, grade 8, of the social science curriculum. So, there is um, some in the primary, primary and lower junior secondary curriculum. So I would say it's sort of quite well catered for. 11% isn't bad, I and mean, if you add on the, this as well, there's, there's some percentage of, of astronomy in the curriculum. So it is covered. When you jump to the uh, senior high school, up to matric, it really, those topics I just showed you, it really is only 4% of their curriculum. So it's a considerable reduction from 11, and just 1% of geography. So it's very little at the senior secondary. So I would say there really is this it's rather minimal, and there's this, there's this gap. Now, it is perfectly possible. Um, it's perfectly possible for us to say, well, teachers should take certain topics and be able to talk about the astronomy aspects. But we have to make we have to realise that teachers will not really do that unless they're told to in the curriculum. And the current curriculum, when it talks about le electromagnetic radiation, doesn't really refer to astronomical aspects of it just sort of talks about the basics, which might be in a te and textbooks are written to that. So if one wants astronomy to be foregrounded a bit more, think of all the children who were excited by it in grades 4 to 8, grades 4 to 9, suddenly teachers don't mention it, grade 10, 11, and 12. So maybe they, they, you know, they're not going to, children are not going to carry on being interested in it. Um, okay, what about universities? Some universities, and I haven't found out about all of them, but I've been, even this week I've found out about these three, they run an undergraduate astronomy course for a sort of general audience. Um, and uh, my university doesn't do that. It only really, uh, astronomy is only in postgrad level. And I would say that this, so this is run for uh, people, whether they're in the science faculty or whether they're in the humanities faculty, they can take these, this course. So it's not very mathematical, more descriptive. But it would be, we do want in our, 
in our population, people to be interested in this. So in, in, interested in astronomy because there are, we, we know there are good reasons for that. And so some universities are promoting it to, a, to some extent as a sort of general interest first year course. Um, many don't do that, though. That's a bit of a problem. Um, and we thi I think it's, I mean, the Astronomy Geographic Act, if you want people to understand why these things are important, you have to have your general university population at least getting uh, access to astronomy courses, general interest in science. We want people who are going to be politicians and humanities graduates, etc. We do want, it's good for them to have been exposed to astronomy. Okay, um, so what content is actually taught, um, uh, just to summarise then what I've said earlier about the content of the, of the school curriculum. In the lower grades, so going back to my question there, in the lower grades it's Earth, solar system, light and space exploration. Interestingly, there is quite a bit of uh, a stress on space science. There's a bit of stress on space science in some of the grades. In the upper grades, that is the matric grades, it's uh, electromagnetic radiation, Earth's magnetic field, redshift, and universal law of gravitation, essentially. So um, that is the, what's there. So you'll notice that these other things you've been talking about here aren't particularly there. Um, and there is a bit of a debate in the, in the, in the astronomy education uh, literature, which I'm going to refer to now, to say, well, what should be there? Even uh, they're mainly talking about a university astronomy course, a basic one. Do you cover these and get people to really understand them? Do you go on to cosmology, the universe, etc.? Because everybody's heard of black holes, and they put the question, what is a black hole? So, so uh, some people say, do this well, and don't bother with this. And other people say, no, 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 you've got to do some of this, and you've really got to look at current astronomy because that's where all the new things are being found out. So um, these are two views. Um, you'll know the two names, Jay Pasakoff. Um, he, uh, he proposes that there should be in a university basic astronomy course, which could also be at the senior high school level, a mix of basic uh, stuff on moon phases and current research. He's very much thinking that current research should be there as a, a, as a topic area. Um, Phil Sadler uh, doesn't agree. He really suggests that the basics should be mastered. So he's very much in favour of, 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 of seasons, moon phases, etc. And he's also talking about doing is more important. And many of you will be familiar with the, a private universe. Some, some of you might be familiar with a private It's a, it's a little video done at Harvard um, in the 1990s. And it asks people questions about um, basic astronomy from, from uh, Harvard graduates. And they don't, they, it, it, it's embarrassing what they don't know, having just come out of Harvard, graduated from Harvard. Not just about um, astronomy, but other aspects of, of science. Like if you're given a, a battery and a wire and a, and a bulb, how do you light the bulb? And these Harvard graduates all struggle with it and stuff. <laughs> um, this is, if you Google this, it's actually, it was freely available um, it's a, 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 from, a, from the States. And they, I used to email them and they would send me a copy. And I've got two copies now. And other, other people have got copies. So it's, it's quite an interesting little thought. And Phil Sather is on a private universe. And he says it's much more important to be doing the basics and actually doing stuff, observing the moon, um, observing things so that they are, because it's so difficult to understand a lot of this very basic stuff, that's important. And we, if we just talk about these new discoveries and we tell people stuff, yes, it's, it's okay, but they won't really learn very much. They'll still go away not understanding what a black hole is. And they can't really experience very much practically on the black hole, whereas they can experience stuff to do with, with seasons and, and moon phases. So there's this debate. It's about 10 years old, this debate, and it hasn't been resolved. Okay, um, so what can we do? So I'm finishing off. Uh, what can we do? Um, we can lobby the Department of Science and Technology because astronomy is an area of importance that they regard it as an area of importance for South Africa. So we can, we can, uh, ASA can, uh, can lobby them and say, we need to improve what's in the curriculum and the Department of Education. Now, the problem is 
the, 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 the curriculum was revised in 1990, and then it's been revised in the 1990, late 1990s. It was revised again in the early 2000s, and it's just been revised about two to three years ago to CAPS. So guess what? I don't think they'll be listening to anybody saying, please, can we put more astronomy in the curriculum? Because it's been revised already several times, and uh, teachers just want it to stay as it is for a few years. So we can't really say we need, and you can't be forcing more stuff into the content, into the, especially into the FET curriculum. You really can't. So I think the important way things to do is to try and stress an astronomy focus to, the, to existing topics. I mentioned some of them, but there are others that you could say, well, this could be viewed from the point, momentum could be viewed from the point of view of astronomy, or astronomy examples could be given to the learners. And maybe that's where something like ASA or a group within ASA could have some sort of influence. Um, so probably some sort of prepackaged astronomy content would be useful. One of the big problems is that the teachers at the higher primary school and the lower secondary school don't like to teach that nice astronomy, this stuff. They, they don't like to teach it there because they say, well, we weren't trained in it. Because they went, when they went to university, well, it was college then, most of them, not all, but many of them went to college, and it was under the area of geography. So they said, well, we don't know, this is geography, but I get the geography teacher to teach it, they say. And that is obviously a bit of a problem. So the idea of teacher workshops are important, and I know several organizations around the country do teacher workshops. But <clears throat> they've got to continue. And one-off teacher workshops, I'm afraid, really don't work very well. You do have to have a series of them. Um, the teachers obviously prefer to have some sort of qualification coming out of it. So that's an area. We do have to help teachers in some way, um, uh, even on the really basic stuff, because it's very easy for them to get the children to draw the moon phases, but it's very difficult to get the children to understand the moon phases and what, what's going on. And as we know, with the, uh, even though it looks relatively simple, understanding the seasons is also quite difficult. Um, so uh, I think we also ought to encourage universities to run... I'm going to try and speak to some of my colleagues at this because uh, I think it's an area, it's, a, it's, a, it's an important cultural issue that people ought to know more about astronomy. So I think it should be made as widely available to to undergraduates as possible. So that's uh, basically my talk, and thanks very much. So, uh... Thank you very much, Tony. We have time for a few questions. Question? Uh, yes, South Africa is not, not, not operating in a vacuum here. So when you say that the things are uh, not so good or, or good, how do you think that is compared to the Um, well, other countries, are, particularly the USA, does a lot in the, what they call the middle school. They have a real earth science focus, but that includes astronomy, solar system, etc. They have a very much an earth science focus, um, and they, uh, they, they do, uh, they, they, I would probably say that, again, at the senior levels, it sort of dips away a little bit again, and I think that's what we've taken our lead from. Um, I've, there's a paper I've written um, in, which is an analysis of astronomy education research over 35 years from the 70s to 2008 in a, in, a, in a science education journal which looks at the research into astronomy education. That really summarizes what is done in, in, these, uh, in, in, in some other countries, several other countries. So, um, but Britain, I would say, is probably similar. Um, but I think they've, 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 looked, they've, they've got a better, a, a better um, movement from primary to junior secondary to senior secondary. Ours seems to stop at grade nine and doesn't relate back to grade those lower grades. And that's, I think, our big problem. I, don't, I just thought, think it's been not thought through very carefully. Okay, another brief, just a brief comment, which is that at, at the, the undergraduate level, what what we need in South Africa to be parochial is we need engineers and computer scientists. In fact, we need Billy Kurtz. We need people like Billy Kurtz here who have an interest in astronomy and, and, and how, to, how to inculcate that into other curricula or um, other mindsets in universities. I think it's quite an interesting issue. Mm, no, true. And please don't leave without talking to me. <laughs> 
It's a quick comment, not a question. Most of us here were fortunate to come from middle class high schools where we either founded or had science clubs. Now in the township schools, both UWC and UCT compete to send in a few educators with an eye to recruiting the top matric students uh, to them. But what we could perhaps lobby the Department of Basic Education to do is to start having full-time professionals who go into township schools to found science clubs there with, of course, an astronomy component. Yes. I have a similar question, actually. In the right, uh, 10, 11, 12, how many subjects do we have? Is it still six or is it more? It's more. Yes, but some of them are not sort of very their like life orientation. Yeah, people. I remember in my years or myself in a way, you know, I was very really disgusted with the great uh, 10, 11, 12, mm-hmm. I only had six subjects, you know. Yeah. I think you should have many sort of subjects available, mm-hmm. but not all of the children should pass all of that. Mm-hmm. The, the brightest students should be able to say take more geography first, rather than size or whatever mm-hmm. it is so it's more spread in the schools for those that are interested. Talk one more magic? And um, there are these academies for science and technology, which are like grade uh, 10, 11, 12. Mm-hmm. Do they have a, a special kind of curriculum that, that focuses more on science and astronomy? They don't, unfortunately. They, they basically follow the, 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 the school curriculum, which is set now. Um, so that's where there's a certain of this unbobbing. Okay, Chris and then Brian. With the advent of uh, SKA, shouldn't we? carry that into the schools of what is really happening because it's, it's a big deal in, in, in this country. Yes, definitely. I mean, it, they are they, they, they are trying to promote themselves, etc. But I think there's a mention of, I don't know if there's actually a mention of SKA. There's certainly nothing in the senior, 10, 11, 12, doesn't not mention radio astronomy or anything like that. It's not mentioned there. And that's where the sort of supplemental stuff has got to come in so that when you're talking about electromagnetic spectrum, you don't just do a sort of theoretical thing and maybe split light up and stuff, but you then talk about some of the other wavelengths and what they know, why it's important, what's happening in South Africa. And it's the, so it's the supplemental stuff that's important. Right? Just an update on UCT. Um, I, my successor, who's called the result of the copy, has introduced uh, a full course in astronomy. I used only to um, have our course of first year or so. Right. Mostly because I thought that what we don't want to do is to produce uh, people with astronomy BSc in third class. Now, it's hardly a marketable degree. <laughs> we now get so many students that we've now got first, second, and final. <coughs> so we, we did use astronomy as the second major, it only be taken as physics. I was against an, an entire major in astronomy, it's what I did myself. And there was not enough physics and mathematics associated with it. That's why I insisted that they could only do astronomy if they had physics as well. But we now have enough students. And we now have started, I don't know if it started this year, I've been away most of the year. Um, but it's about to start, or has started, first, second, third year, and a major in astronomy. So that, I think we're the first problem. Okay. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Thank you.